Limited na 3,000 plus mixed pellet and grains. Ibang laking integra. Welcome to Open for Business. Mapapanood nyo rin ang programang OFB sa Facebook at YouTube. Mag-like at mag-subscribe sa aming social media at Net25 TV. I am Cesar Vallejos. Welcome to Open for Business. Samahan ninyo kaming tuklasin ang iba't ibang pamamaraan kung paano mapaunlad ang inyong negosyo. Aalamin din natin mula sa mga eksperto ang mga pangunahing trends at mga strategiya kung paano natin mapapanatiling ang negosyo, maliit man o malaki, ay maging laging open for business. The COVID-19 crisis is still present, but fortunately, the pandemic is becoming more manageable. Sa simula ng 2022, ilang mga bansa na ang nagluwag ng kanilang border restrictions. Isa na riyan ang Pilipinas na nagsimula lamang tumanggap ng mga dayuhang turista matapos ang dalawang taon. Nariyan din ang Australia, Bali sa Indonesia, at simula nga noong Marso 1, ang Israel. This begs the question, can travel return to pre-pandemic levels this year? Can the tourism sector make a complete recovery? In this episode, we'll find out how one country strives to revive its tourism industry by allowing all travelers to see firsthand its stunning landscapes and bring home pleasant memories from their trips. Mr. Sami Yahya, Israel Ministry of Tourism Director for the Philippines and India, will discuss the attraction of agritourism. Join us for the last episode of our Tourism in Israel series. All these in this episode of Open for Business. This program is supported by Sierra Eye Center Plus and Sierra Health Diagnostic Center and multi-specialty clinic. Quality and affordable health care for all. New BMEG Integra 3000 Plus Mixed Pellets. Good news sa lahat ng mahilig magluto at kumain. May bago at katakam-takam na cooking show dito lamang sa Net25. Ako si Patty Daza. Ako naman si Sandy Daza. Samahan niyo kami magpinsan dito sa Lutong Daza. Bukod sa masarap at abot kaya na recipes, masarap ang kwentuhan at halakakan dito. At syempre, laging may special celebrity guest. Huwag kalimutan, Lutong Daza, dito, dito lamang sa Net25. Welcome back to Open for Business today. We have Mr. Sami Yahya, Israel Ministry of Tourism Director for the Philippines and India. Hi, Sami. Hi, good evening, Cesar. Uh, do you think this is an indication already that uh, things will be normal? It depends who you're asking. If you're asking me, it's still not, uh, you know, to tell me that you're late because of the traffic. <laughs> but yeah, I think if the people going out to the street, we don't have masks, you see traffics, you see people in the street, so it is indicated that things are coming back. And thank you, and I hope this uh, second uh, half of this year, everything will be normal, because we start to understand this uh, pandemic is uh, more PR than it's really killing people. So I hope <laughs> that uh, every government will relax this uh, restriction and things coming back soon. Okay. Now, speaking of uh, pre-pandemic and speaking of this uh, relaxation, easing of the economy, I got figures that pre-pandemic, there were between 3 uh, to 4 million tourists going to Israel every year. And most tourists come from Europe and a growing number are from North America. That was pre-pandemic. Can you give us an idea what happened during yeah, the pandemic? Pre-pandemic, I will correct you, there was a 2019 4.8 million. Wow. 
travelers who came to Israel, most of them, yeah, okay, North America, but we have open Asia as a place from China, Filipino, India, also they came to Israel. And we start to see rapidly numbers going from Asia. Mm -hmm. It's not only North America and Europe. Uh, the point we was looking 2020 to, to host more than 5 million. Uh, we changed a little bit in our strategy. We didn't think that Israel is only for pilgrims. It's open for leisure, for mice, for investment, for FIT. Mm -hmm. uh, and 2020, we start with a good numbers first month. But as you know, the pandemic start and everything shut down, closed. And by the way, Israel, the first country who decided to close the sky because mm -hmm. we were afraid and because safety is very important for us. So, yeah, I am sorry. <laughs> That's what happened for during these two years. And as you know, as everyone knows, that the first impact was for the tourism industry. And the last one who's going back to the market and business is the, also the uh, uh, tourism industry. But I hope that this year we will reach the 50 percent. According to our figures and statistics, we think that we will uh, this year we will have two millions, like 50 percent from what we had in 2019. Mm. That's a good thing, Sami. Uh, and also, you mentioned your country was the one of the very first ones who responded to um, um, the lockdowns. Uh, you, uh, you, you implemented measures immediately. Can you also give us your story of the measures that your government did? Because similar here in the Philippines, our administration was one of the first countries who responded uh, immediately when there was COVID-19. So what were the, the measures of your government, you know, as, uh, um, you know, to somehow mitigate the impact of uh, the growth of uh, or the spread of the virus? You know, I remember 2020, I came here to Philippines on, on 5th of February 2020. We participated in Expo in uh, Manila. And you had the first case here. He was Chinese, by the way, and he was uh, quarantined in the hospital. And when we I came here, my DG came with us and he called me if he still is safe to come. And we talk about this and we came to Manila and we had an excellent and very nice uh, uh, expo. We participate. But what happened in Israel, you know, when you have pandemic and you don't know what will be the impact from this virus and nobody understand it. So I think it was smart to close the border and to reschedule things. And first you need to understand the, the behavior of this virus and mm -hmm. then to take action. Yes. So I think at the beginning it was the right idea. But from my angle, as the time going on and we see that this pandemic or this virus, uh, Corona, what is his name, COVID-19, Omicron, whatever, <laughs> it's not that bad and that hard for the humanity and it's not killing like other uh, virus. So I, I think it was maybe if we do <laughs> Going back, it's maybe like to use the Sweden uh, strategy to open all the time or a Turkey strategy to be hosted uh, tourism all the time. Uh, but on the other hand, we pass it. I hope that we pass it also because I believe that, that this virus will be with us. We need to adjust our life for a new life. Uh, adjust, you know, it will be with us. It will travel with us in the airplane. <laughs> it will be with us in the restaurant. But it's not that... Uh, hard virus that we need to key, to be afraid from it. That's what I believe. Wow, that's, and, that, that's very insightful, Sami. Now, going back, you mentioned about, you know, pre-pandemic, you mentioned about this exposition. Is there a shift now on how you promote um, tourism? Do you think um, expos are still relevant? When you, we're talking about marketing, you need to understand that we need to work in a, a lot of fields and a lot of channels. It's marketing, mm -hmm. it's not one way. It's a lot of channels you need to use. Now, expo and fairs, it's one of these channels. But our engagement with the market is more than this. Uh, we like, if we're talking about advertising, we're talking about fam sending, uh, making collaboration with other third part. We have a lot of channels of marketing. But yes, I think the face of face-to-face -face meeting. During these two years, a lot of business happened that we maintenance our partners via Zoom meeting <laughs> and 
And at the beginning, it was nice. Okay, you're staying at home and you're using Zoom. You don't need to work, no traffic, <laughs> and you are being the time. But it's not the life. It's not the real life. Right. So all the time I'm speaking about this, even the IT, we're talking about IT and virtual. This, this is not the real life. You mm -hmm. still need the real life because this, I believe, more in touch uh, and uh, smell yes. and experience. Experiential. So this is will never end. The people need to to do it, and they they need it for their inner peace. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, I'm getting crazy from a laptop. You know, <laughs> putting the speaker and talking in Zoom. It's like in, you are in the space talking with yourself. So yeah, I hope things coming back and uh, people are hungry for traveling. Uh, speaking of. Uh, being hungry for traveling. Do you see any new trend in international travel? Yes, yes. We see more families because, you know, mm. this pandemic bring the people to gather together, like the family to being close family. Mm -hmm. So then during these two years, you are closing to your family mm -hmm. because you are afraid from uh, other uh, communicate with other people. From, so the distance start to be like more families uh, traveling. We think that they start to ask for open space, mm -hmm. more than closed space. Uh, they would like to see more sites and nature than uh, joining, you know, five stars hotels and mm -hmm. keeping in, in the swimming pool. They will prefer now ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, so for Manila, and I, don't th I think for Filipinos, it would be a great uh, mm -hmm. opportunity that people start to live to use this uh, site, you know, you have a lovely ocean here. Yes, and I <laughs> and, hope you will, you will also yeah, always sure, come here in yeah. the Philippines and enjoy and, yeah, our beaches. Sure, hey, I am, uh, no, in the, um, Filipinos, uh, for me, it's, it's a perfect place. So yeah, people will look for sites for farm tourism. This, yes. The farm tourism angle, I think it will raise, because people want to touch and to feel the vegetables, to understand how you make it and, if you develop a marketing, your marketing for this field, it's also will grow. Which exactly is my question, Sammy. Are you somehow changing your marketing strategy in or, or trying to recalibrate how you promote tourism? Because before, I think we have discussed this um, uh, a few days ago, wherein before you have to scan photos, you have to scan magazines, yes. you have to watch um, TV advertising for you to really be motivated to go to that place. Now, how are you changing your marketing strategies, your promotional strategies yeah. to attract more people? I will give you uh, another tip for me in my side, how I'm going to market this time. Because we, they measure us for numbers, how mm. many people you bring to my country. So the first time after the pandemic, post-pandemic, I believe that we need to target groups more than FIT. Oh, okay. Targeting groups is like I am fishing in the swimming with a lot of fish. <laughs> because when I target corporate and invest, invite him for, so they have the groups, the groups is numbers. Mm -hmm. So this is one, it's easier for me to target them than the FIT to use online and offline media. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing that I believe uh, that the traveler, before I'm asking people, I need to ask myself, mm -hmm. what do I like from what I am afraid, mm -hmm. what I'm looking for, and what will make me happy when I'm traveling. So usually I am, before I'm sleeping, I'm asking myself. Mm -hmm. I don't ask, not my wife, not anyone, myself. Mm -hmm. And I believe that now, after pandemic, First of all, I want to be safe. Second, yes. I want to touch things and to feel things. Before Asian, like I remember first time I traveled, my first travel was outside Israel. It was to Sharm Sheikh, yeah? Mm -hmm. And because it's in the border and we, I was like high school student, mm -hmm. no that rich money. Mm -hmm. So we just uh, drive the car to the Sharm Sheikh. And I had a big camera, with, you know, shooting, photos, 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 and going to develop the photos for people. And this is was my, uh, you know, my experience. I don't remember anything from there, only the photos. And these photos already disappeared because <laughs> I don't know where I put it. I, yes. It's already 35 years ago. But today with the develop of the IT, with the high techs, with the communication, with the global uh, village and the, the media, the social media, 
you know, you, your phone mobile and today is like, um, you know, uh, it's a video and the sound and map. It's, uh, it's like I have a there. TV channel. <laughs> so you can shoot and the world and in, the your world hands. in your <laughs> hand. Yeah. Uh, or, or the opposite, you are in the <laughs> hand of the world because what you read there, what you have feedback there, what you understand from this small box, it's amazing. Yes. So we think that, yeah, feedback in the online, it's the, the engagement, uh, how people talk about your mm -hmm. destination, how to develop the, uh, the, the, the message for the right people, for the pilgrims, pilgrims, for the mice, mice, for the mm -hmm. people who are looking for activity in the winery, for the culinaria. Mm -hmm. So you, you can target them easier than before you just put uh, advertising in magazine mm -hmm. or a uh, board in the street. So this is, will be uh, our targets and we will uh, divide our marketing in which people we want to target mm -hmm. and we will push uh, in the social media mm -hmm. we will push it in face-to-face uh, -face direct marketing uh, like we can make a presentation for corporate or uh, we can invite the bishop for pilgrims uh, we can push for ecotourism for with the universities uh, this is in plus for course, plus the other things like influencers and fam and journalists and media. Well, that, Sami, that's that's very innovative. It's like um, it's like um, really something revolutionary. Where you in uh, it's uh, I think I heard this word about omni-channel, om omni-channel marketing, where in you use uh, several channels. Now, my uh, next question is that. Israel has a lot of things to offer. And then you said, uh, of course, we knew in the past the traditional way that it's, a, it's an area for, for pilgrimage. But now you are putting a new twist in how you position um, Israel. Like, uh, for example, you mentioned about um, agritourism, agrotourism. Is this also a way or a different approach in trying to or, or presenting your country differently in a different perspective to different markets? The product was there. Israel is a, it's, it's a, it's a market that have everything. And I think Israel is unique mm -hmm. than other countries because Israel is ancient land. And this land connects Europe, Africa, and Asia. Because, you know, if you were talking about the spicy way, the silk way from China people, must walk from this land. Mm -hmm. And there's just settlement there, so they have the diversity of food, culture, music. So it's a unique place, you can't find it in other places. Mm -hmm. Like if we're talking about Filipino, it's nice, but all Filipinos are the same, yeah? <laughs> Israel, it's 500 kilometers, a small land, but the north is different than the south. If you like snow, you can go to the north and you have snow. <laughs> now you want to, you don't have time and uh, you want to rush, you can just drive the car two, three hours, you have hot spring. Oh, wow. Another two, three hours, you are diving in Elat and it's hot. So there is a huge difference between the north and the south in small, small line, 500 kilometers only. It's not like a huge countries. And then the food is different uh, and the heritage of the history, because it was a lot of history in Israel since four or 5,000 years ago. I don't know mm -hmm. if you know that the first city in the world is in Israel, Jericho. Mm -hmm. And Jerusalem is ancient, and we have aqueducts like double cities under the, uh, the ground, up of the ground from mm -hmm. the Byzantine uh, century and the Ottoman, and all this heritage is still in a good shape. So the product is there. The point what the people thought about Israel. So pilgrims, all the time for the Filipino market, they thought that Israel is only for pilgrims. But no, Israel is not, and we're pushing for this now in our marketing, in our exp explaining for the DMC here, the agent, that you can have a culture and historical sites with the pilgrims. You can make business and little bit pilgrims. Because the people, we are the same. We are believing, we are, have, have the same blood, we have the same feeling. It doesn't mean if I am pilgrims, I just need to go to Via de la Rosa and the church. I still want to swim in the, to, to, <laughs> yeah, to see a winery or to swim in the Dead Sea, yeah? And it's the opposite. If I am a businessman, it doesn't mean that I don't believe. I don't want to see the church. So what we believe that it needs to be the combination. And this a is holistic package. holistic package. What yes. historical, with culinary, with, and this is win-win situation. For yeah. the us as Israel to, to show you another angle of Israel, 
and another angle of the product. And for the Filipino to win, win because he will have the activity, he will feel, he will touch, and he will test mm -hmm. more than pilgrims. And he can't find it in other places in the world. Wow, perfect. Uh, we know that Israel has limited land and water res resources. So what are, you know, how, how is your country um, overcoming these limitations? And uh, how are you um, trying to highlight this as an advantage rather than um, a weakness? It's a small country and it's limited in uh, source, but what good in Israel, we, knew, we know how to manage. Mm. We know how to manage the resource, so mm. it's not only that we have invite uh, and new tools to control and in, in high tech and agro high tech or in recycling water. The point is, first you need to know how to manage. Mm -hmm. When you know how to manage your resource, and you, then you need you know and you understand what's your needs. When you know what your needs, you can develop uh, tools. So what's happened in Israel? We have the greatest mines in Israel, the high tech, as you know. And because we are limited and we need water and we need land for agriculture, and we believe you need food and water, otherwise uh, <laughs> you don't need to. <laughs> uh, more. So yeah, we develop uh, technology. Uh, we have agriculture and planting in the desert. We took the sea water and we made it uh, sweet water for drink. Mm -hmm. uh, we know how to contain the water from the raining. Yes. Uh, we recycling water, recycling plastic, everything. So, so everything yeah. about sustainability. Yes, sustainability. Yes, and we now talking about green uh, power also. If it's uh, wo uh, solar or wind, so yeah, we know. But the most important, how to manage. Mm -hmm. well, well, yeah, like I know a lot of countries they have a lot of resources, but don't they don't know how to manage it? <laughs> exactly. Speaking of of uh, um, management, there is a mindset or the intellect, you know, that leads us to think that Israel has a very great uh, education. Can you talk about what education is like in Israel that gives high importance to resource management, technology? Because I, I, I think I've read somewhere that at the young age, you are already exposed to science and technology, to to a lot of um, research at a very young age. How is education in Israel? Everyone, everyone in Israel educated. There is no, you must go to the school. You can't, if you don't go to the school, they take your parents to the jail. So <laughs> <laughs> it must be educated in Israel. Everyone, it's like 100% we are educated. Now it's high school after then, um, you know, we, uh, the Jewish mind, I will call it, uh, it's not Israeli, it's the Jewish mind. Because Israel, it's, you know, you have mixed people there. But the Jewish mind know how, uh, I think he see the future, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we know that the power is in the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And we study this, that the power is in the knowledge, the power is in research. And when you know and you understanding and you know more information, you can take a decision. Mm -hmm. And when you're taking the decision, this will be the right decision because you have the uh, data, the information. Uh, by the way, it's not only to have the data and the information, you need to analyze it. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you have a lot of data and you don't know what's good and what's bad for you and w what to do with this data. There's a lot of people there having the data. <laughs> they don't know what to do with it. So Israel have this mind to understand the data, to analyze it, to take a decision. And yeah, we see that uh, people start to think like global, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we are not stuck in the same box. We are sitting in small land, mm -hmm. but our mind is all over the world. You can find Israeli minds in everywhere in the world. Speaking of data, you said you are making use of data um, to make informed decisions and uh, you analyze that data. Uh, are you saying also, Sami, that um, um, one of the factors why Israel you know, is uh, progressive in terms of this innovation is because um, you highlight um, technology as well in aspects because I Aside from aside from from information technology and technology per se, I also know that um, there are there are Israel Israeli brands in 
cyber security. I think yeah. you are uh, you, one of your brands is top notch in terms of You're talking cyber. about NSO, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are one of the pioneers, and you are um, the country and the mind behind all this um, information technology and the many innovations uh, on the internet. There is a need. Whereas there is a need, you need to develop. So Israel needs these things because we are one country, Israel country, small country. So there is a need to develop these ideas and there is the courage to do it. You know, sometimes you have the idea, but you don't have the courage also, mm -hmm. or you don't have the budget, but <laughs> Israel have it. <laughs> and more if we're talking about high tech, we are not talking about high tech and defense on cyber. What rise in Israel that we are developed also and research high tech in agriculture, you know, yes. in fishing and dairy, milk, you know, the, the Israeli cow milk, mm -hmm. the uh, best cow in the world that can give you 40 liters per day milks. There's no cows like this, mm -hmm. even goats. I had a meeting with the veterinary in India, he's a professor in the university and he asked me, they are going to uh, import goats from Israel because the milk, <laughs> the quality of the milk and the quantity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, one cow, it's like doing in Israel, it's like uh, doing 10 cows in India. So mm -hmm. now when we talk about this, it's not good only for the, it's good for the environment because mm -hmm. 10 cows making CO2, bad things for the, you know, for the environment, <laughs> for the ozone, it's less. So yeah, it's, it's connected. If we're making high-tech and research and agro-tourism, it's connected together. Mm -hmm. This, it's like in the, what's happening in the tourism industrial. There is no flight, there is no tourism. So people with the limited thinking, they think, ah, oh, no flight, it's okay. <laughs> uh, business will continue in, the, in Manila, yeah? But Manila, lake of tourism, hotels not working. The people who's working in the hotels, they don't have money. So the driver who taking the, you know, the company who making the food for the airline, there is a lot, it's a chain. Yes. It's not only the airplane. It's... So the same thing in Israel. I believe that the technology, it's not in one uh, angle. It's like spread mm -hmm. technology in defense, in agriculture, in water, and water. From front end to back yeah. end uh, yeah. industries. Now, and when you are control it, you are controlling power. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about, the knowledge. Knowledge is the power. Wow. But very insightful, Sami. Now, what do you see here in the Philippines? What are you looking at in terms of demand? To take your money. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, not only the Philippines, but uh, a lot of people would want to travel. Not only Filipinos. Uh, I'm sure Indians also would like yeah. to travel now because there is this uh, some sort of uh, shopping revenge that they they call it. I don't know what, how they call it, but. Yes, how do you, we, what do we, you see we, here? It's like, like this, we, as you said, mentioned before, Israel was open at the beginning for tourism, United States, because the uh, collaboration with the Evangelii and the, with the Jewish community in United States and Europe, because it was a close, and Europe seeking for sun mm -hmm. and sand in, uh, in Israel. It was 20 years ago when we sell sea and sand. Mm -hmm. and sun, three S. Things depend, uh, things change with the time. Uh, as I said before, they want to take photos. Today they want to feel, they want yes. activity. They want to go to winery and to make cheese and to test the mm. cheese. They want to be with local people. In the farm, in as the you farm, said. Yeah. Uh, one day in the farm to go to the kibbutz. Kibbutz is a, a, a community and the Jewish, uh, like it was in the beginning as a communism, communist idea that uh, living in the kibbutz, so people don't want to see what's being kibbutz. This is only in Israel, there was no other place like this. So to seek for new things, a new activity, a new feeling. Today, Israel is open for us again, because all the world is open, and Israel for seeking for tourism, as, because we know that it's like, uh, you know, it's good for business, uh, for the country, when you bring foreign currency mm -hmm. uh, to your country. And we have a lot to give for tourism. So, plus America, United States, North America, and Europe, we see that Asia has uh, a, a big potential for uh, tourism, mm -hmm. starting from China, India. China and India, half of the world, mm -hmm. by numbers, yeah? We're looking for tourism from here, and we know that the Filipino people love Israel. 
Filipino people don't need visa, so it's easy for yeah. us. What are the similarities and differences of the Israeli traveler? Uh, let's start first oh, with. Oh, yeah, uh, we can talk about <laughs> Israeli travelers. No? <laughs> well, let's start first with uh, yeah. uh, the similarities. Similarity, I think that people seeking for uh, new things, uh, uh, for inner peace, maybe. Uh, for the Filipino coming to the Holy Land for inner peace, for the Israeli coming to see the ocean and to risk also inner peace. Uh, similarity. The, the difference that the Israeli travelers, not all of them for sure, mm. I'm, uh, usually the youngest are very uh, dis undisciplined, like, uh, mm. and they think that they own the world. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's different than the Filipino travelers, um, and I know why. And this is, by the way, why we are in in the front all the time because we want quality, more quality, yeah. and we asking mm. even if it's not Great about service. quality, we and service because we think that. We want these things. I will reach these things. I will do to get these things. You know, so this is put you in the front. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's not nice when you're behaving with people to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you can be you can be aggressive with your research, aggressive with your knowledge, uh, competitor with other countries when it's talking about uh, weapons or. Uh, Mines or stealing the mines, but yeah, they are Israeli younger, tra youngest, yeah, mm -hmm. youngest traveler before army. After they go into the army, they still have, uh, you know, they understand that the life is other. But uh, yeah, most of them they are hyperactive. Mm -hmm. Let's say like this. But Filipinos, teens also uh, are also mm -hmm. hyperactive. Yeah. But maybe maybe yours today, is... yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, but. Um, um, Sammy, you've been in the Philippines several times. How do you describe uh, the f uh, today morning? I, today morning, I had a meeting with the Secretary of Ministry, uh, Her Excellency uh, Bernanda mm -hmm. Boyat, mm -hmm. and I give her my feedback. And really, it was from my heart. Uh, when I arrive in this restriction of uh, COVID, when I arrived to the airport, everything was perfect. They give us the best service I had in other airports. I will tell you the truth. And everything going smoothly. Mm -hmm. There was no mass or misunderstanding what to do, where to go. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and inside Manila, it's like uh, they said, okay, Filipino third world. No, sorry. <laughs> Come to Manila and you see first world, like, the infrastructure, the cleanness, the vibe of the city, uh, I think it's perfect. Plus, your islands, you know. <laughs> wow, th that's great to know. Now, let's talk about your land. You are encouraging Filipinos to go to um, Israel. What can Filipinos, businesses, families expect there? And if you have a list of where to go, you know, which ones are these? So first of all, with my respect to Filipino, again, it's the same. All the islands from Palawan, Davao, Cebu, Burak, it's the, the same lands, yeah? Okay. I'll accept yeah. that for now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. same acclaim, the same nature. Uh, yes. Coconut, beaches, nice be It's the same. It looks like the same. Uh, but Israel is different. Israel is, as I said, from the south to the north, it's 500 kilometers. You can drive it by car in our highway in maximum six hours if you drive like uh, this way. So you can start your day in the uh, north, in the Hermon Mount, having your breakfast with the snow. Mm -hmm. It's wow. snowing and you can make your ski in the morning. Drive the car two hours, two and a half hours. You have hot spring uh, pools wow. and the nature hot spring. And then you take your lunch, driving again two and a half hours, you can reach Dead Sea. You can stay in the Dead Sea. And then another two and a half hours, you are in Elat, and you can dive in Elat. So in the same day, it's <laughs> attracting. You know, I did it, you know. But for sure, you don't need to do it in one day, but in your travel in one week, you can do it. Mm -hmm. And you can have the quality and you love it. So this is the difference between my country and other countries. You tell me, okay, India have it, you know snow in the Himalaya and various, yes. but you need to fly five hours, only flights. <laughs> so what I am saying that in my land, 
this is, you can have it. Uh, the food is very uh, colorful. Uh, kind of foods you can is find. it something that's very different from yeah, our yeah, very, from the yeah, philippine yeah. cuisine yeah yeah it's very 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 different it's mixed asian western eastern mediterranean arab oh. so this mix bring you another different cuisine, flavors yeah different flavors uh, we have a lot of things that uh, they don't like hummus falafel uh, borekas uh, they don't have it here uh, so this this food it's very delicious, <laughs> mouth watering. Yeah. But, but Sami, how affordable or how expensive it is? You, you, you tend to sound, you know, really very exciting. But a lot of, um, of course, families. We have, uh, uh, we also have uh, the AB market watching us now. But a lot also are coming from the middle class. Is traveling to Israel um, prohibitive or? Are there promotions that you do? Are there? Is it something that's really easy on the packet for a uh, majority of the Filipinos? So when you ask me about what I'm looking in Filipino, one of the things that happen in Filipino that the middle class start to be huge. Yes. Yeah, so this is a demand. When the middle class is huge, so we have more demand. Now, Israel is uh, like other countries. You can stay in a low budget mm -hmm. and you can stay as much as you want in the budget, you know. Mm -hmm. But the low budget, it's available for everyone. And when I'm talking about low budget, it doesn't mean that you're gonna sit in a bad hotels or a smelly hotel, no. The hotels is very clean. It's super clean, I will say it. But the budget is less because it's not five star. They don't have a swimming pool or gym or, you know, the service is not that uh, you are looking for. But still, uh, you can offer it. Uh, they are Airbnb for mm -hmm. families if you want to take uh, and yeah the prices is uh, affordable for uh, let's say for family one week uh, three four thousand dollars uh, mm -hmm. it can be mm -hmm. and the maximum it's depend on you we have the, also the luxury hotels which cost you one night three thousand dollars <laughs> and so it depends what you are looking for mm -hmm. as what you are looking for in the nature or in the what to eat still, the same here, like in yes. Manila, yeah, when I came options. here. I will be frankly with you, I have a budget for the hotels because the government pay, yeah? Okay. So I need to look for the hotels, which hotel have this budget. So I have, let's say, $150 budget, but there is hotels, they're asking $300, $400. So I use the hotel with my budget. Okay. So okay. It's, again, when you're traveling, you have the budget. Even for backpack, you know, young girls, they want to travel. We have places to sleep for backpack. Wow, interesting. Like, we have hostels, five star, three star. Uh, and the price is also different between cities, between middle of Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, and Haifa and Akko. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I cannot help uh, ask you this uh, because Open for Business is a lot of viewers about, uh, uh, from coming from um, MSMEs, uh, from young entrepreneurs, from would-be entrepreneurs. How is doing business in Israel? Um, would you also encourage, um, is, are there uh, programs or opportunities for um, businessmen to establish business in Israel or uh, Israeli, um, the business community there, establishing their own um, uh, businesses, investments here in the Philippines? You know, I, I don't know if you know, but there is a Israeli chamber business uh, organization here in Filipino. Yes. There is a lot of business between Filipino and Israel. And in Na yesterday I was uh, in meeting and there was a group from Israel. They're coming to invest in real estate in Manila. So the business is there. Uh, I am not in my sector, the business, because it's more for the economic uh, attach, economic attache. But yeah, the business is there. Uh, and Israel, in during the pandemic, I think, yeah, there is a lot of business come down, you know, because of the, they closed like hotels and uh, uh, guides, uh, tourist guide and some restaurant, which wa their work was with the tourism. But on the other hand, I read an article in Israel that in 2021, they sold 300,000 new car. <laughs> and before pandemic, it was 250,000. Like, <laughs> they, they, they increased in 10%, 15% in the pandemic, uh, during the pandemic. 
I don't know from where the money comes, but <laughs> meaning that the, the business is running. And so what have you learned from the pandemic? How, what, or how did the pandemic change you? I, I love to do. I am thinking, and when I think, I believe in my idea, I start to do it. And before pandemic, I was running all the time, Manila, India, India, Manila, and all India and Israel, action. Suddenly, everything just come down, relax, okay, one month, okay, we will rest one month, but start to be more and more. You know, they said, okay, lockdown two weeks. After two weeks, again, two weeks, and not again on one month. Oh, oh my God, it's gonna be <laughs> then like it a, to a nobody, year, yeah, one and year, then two another year. year. <laughs> so during this year, I, do, I did three things. Maybe if there was no pandemic, I would not do it. <laughs> I get married. <laughs> you get married? I get and? married. I bought a farmhouse in Italy. Wow, and? <laughs> and I bought a new house for my family. Oh, so, interesting, <laughs> interesting. Three things I will never do it, I think, in my life. And? Suddenly you are indeed hyperactive. Yeah, suddenly <laughs> I did it. And I talked with my uh, DJ before. I told him, they must stop it. Otherwise, I don't know what I'll do. Maybe I'll get divorced. <laughs> <laughs> I need to run to start to work again. Yeah, uh, but I study something else also. I think that the family is most important things. Like before, I was running all the time. I forget my father and my mom. I am very close to them. But when I came to India and a lot of work, I forgot to call sometimes. But now in the pandemic, I start to feel that the family is the most important things. Perfect. And money will come. Perfect. You know. So yeah, it's relaxing, so it's better. And uh, I think, yeah, the family. And uh, that I get married and I am waiting for my wife. Uh, we're waiting for baby also, so all sorts will happen. In the, that is perfect. This, uh, and before we let Mr. Sami Yahya go, may we ask him to give his message to Filipinos who are listening and, uh, and watching and who also would want to try, experience Israel. Your invitation to Filipinos. Yeah, so first of all, I would like to thank you and thank Eagle TV for this invitation. Uh, I just want to tell the Filipino, Mabuhay. Yes. <laughs> and you must understand, you have, I think, best country, uh, you have really lovely places and you are a kind of, uh, you know, your vibe of the life. Uh, and when first time I came here, I saw people standing in the line. I, lo I love it, they're waiting for the taxi. Like it's amazing discipline, the cleanness of the city, how you uh, love your country also. When we're talking about Filipino, I met a lot of Filipino. So yeah, I love it and thank you that uh, you invited me again. And what I want to say that we, as Israeli, people to people, we are open and you are welcome, less restriction and you don't need visa. There is no, you need just PCR test before you arrive and when you land PCR test. Uh, it's open for every people, unvaccinated or vaccinated. It's the same for us and you are welcome. And these are waiting for you. Hope to see you there. That was a very exciting conversation with Mr. Sami Yahya, Israel Ministry of Tourism Director for the Philippines and India. Open for Business will be back. Stay with us. This... Business is at the helm. Ang Pilipinas ay patungo sa lalong pinalakas at pinaigting na ugnayan sa ibang mga bansa. Ito ang siniguro mismo ng mga ambassadors na nakipagkita 
sa leader ng susunod na administrasyon na si President-elect Bongbong Marcos. This week, Marcos was visited by envoys from arguably the most important economies and defense partners in the world today. It includes Ambassador Gerard Ho of Singapore, Ambassador Lor Bofils of United Kingdom, Luc Veron of European Union, and Michel Bocuz of France, the ambassadors of Japan, South Korea, and India, as well as United States Charge Affair, also met with PBBM last week. Nagpaabot pa ng pagbati ang ambassadors ng iba't ibang mga bansa, kabilang na ang Israel. Nangako ang mga kinatawan na palalakasin ang kalakalan at diplomasya maging ang pagtataguyod ng economic recovery. Magandang senyales ito para sa ating bansa na iiwan ng administrasyong Duterte sa isang sitwasyong pang-ekonomiya na puno ng potensyal. Determinado si Marcos na patunayang mali ang iniisip ng mga kritiko at maging ng Western media na katatakutan ng foreign investors na pumasok sa bansa dahil sa pagkakahalal sa kanya. Ang sunod-sunod na pakikipag-usap ng mga ambassadors ay indikasyong hindi bibitawan ng international community ang Pilipinas sa pagbang muli. Welcome back to Open for Business. I am Brandy Bernardino, and here are the trending business news around the world. Elon Musk's move to buy Twitter faces roadblocks. Even for the richest person on the planet, buying Twitter was always going to be a challenge. A highly complex financial transaction now made even trickier by a defensive poison pill move from the platform's board. Musk's $43 billion offer lays out the myriad potential pitfalls, possible government approvals, legal as well as regulatory due diligence, negotiations of a final agreement, and of course, how to pay for it all. Then Twitter's board showed it won't go quietly, saying any acquisition of over 15% of the firm's stock without its okay would trigger a plan to flood the market with shares and thus make a buyout much harder. Musk has the option of sidestepping the board and trying to buy shares directly from shareholders on the market, but that could lead to tedious negotiations, with some stock owners holding out for more money. China economy grows 4.8% in first quarter. China's economy grew 4.8% in the first quarter, the National Bureau of Statistics said, warning of significant challenges ahead as a resurgence of the coronavirus threatens Beijing's ambitious annual target. The world's second biggest economy was already losing steam in the latter half of last year, with a property slump and regulatory crackdowns. But Beijing's unrelenting zero-COVID approach to multiple virus outbreaks this year has clogged supply chains and locked down tens of millions of people, including the economic dynamos of Shanghai and Shenzhen. China's gross domestic product growth was better than expected at 4.8% on-year in the first quarter, up from 4% in the final months of 2021. And now on to our tech buzz, where we find out the latest trends in technology. Today we learn, what is a DEX? A decentralized exchange, better known as a DEX, is a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace where transactions occur directly between crypto traders. DEXs fulfill one of crypto's core possibilities, fostering financial transactions that aren't officiated by banks, brokers, payment processors, or any other kind of intermediary. The most popular DEXs utilize the Ethereum blockchain and are part of the growing suite of decentralized finance or DeFi tools, which make a huge range of financial services available directly from a compatible crypto wallet. 
And now on to today's job hunting tip. Every week, we will provide you with tips for first-time job seekers, for those wanting to advance in their careers, or even those wanting to start fresh and change professions. Today's tip, read job descriptions carefully. Once you have found a job that you want to apply for, make sure you read the job description and instructions carefully. Do they want you to submit your resume through an online portal? Do they want a PDF of your resume? Do they want a cover letter or a bio video? Do they ask you to submit your application to a specific email address? Failure to follow directions can lead to your application being rejected. Kasi katulad mo, gusto rin namin ang magandang bukas para sa kanya. Hatid namin ang dekalidad na edukasyon at makabagong pasilidad sa abot kayang halaga. Kaya huwag ka na mangamba, sasamahan ka namin to pa rin ang mga pangarap niya. Maaasahan mong sulit dito ang mga pinagsikapan mo sa aming mga makabagong pasilidad at sistema ng edukasyon. May lalabas natin ang aking talino at mga kakayahan niya. Kahit sa munting halaga, makakasiguro ka na makakasabay siya sa mabilis na pag-ikot ng mundo. Sa New Era, karamay mo kami sa bawat hamon. Kaagapay mo kami sa bawat hakbang. Kasama mo kami sa bawat niti at tagumpay. Open for Business is back and our biz word of the week is agritourism. Agritourism is a form of commercial enterprise that links agricultural production and processing with tourism in order to attract visitors onto a farm, ranch or other agricultural business for the purposes of entertaining and educating the visitors and generating income from the farm, ranch or business owners. Hindi matatawaran ang ambag ng turismo sa pagpapasigla ng ekonomiya, pagbuo ng mga trabaho at pagpapatibay ng relasyon at pagkakaunawaan sa pagitan ng mga bansa. As more countries open up, agritourism is gaining more popularity, attracting tourists who seek serenity and a unique experience in the industrialized world. Agritourism helps small business owners and preserves the local heritage all while being an enjoyable vacation for the whole family. May potensyal din itong paunlarin ang mga kanayunan at palawigin ang kaalaman ng mga tao patungkol sa agrikultura at ang ambag nito sa seguridad sa pagkain. 
with that, our quote of the week is from the French author and Nobel Prize winner, Mr. Andre Gide. He said, Man cannot discover new oceans unless he has the courage to lose sight of the shore. Maraming salamat sa inyong panonood ng Open for Business. Thank you to our guest, Mr. Sami Yahya. Samahan ninyo kaming muli sa Open for Business sa susunod na linggo. Learn more insights from CEOs, thought leaders, industry experts, and SMEs promoting business development in the Philippines. Keeping you informed and open for business and be ahead of the curve from vision to action. Panoorin din ang programang OFB sa Facebook at YouTube. Mag-like at mag-subscribe sa aming social media at Net25 TV. Para sa Open for Business, ako po si Cesar Valier. This program is supported